You all are the glory of the Father, and I love you all so very much. In Jesus' name, amen. I just wanted to bring this word because I believe that this is what the Father is doing um, unto each and every one of us and for each and every one of us in this very season. And I believe uh, if you have been following uh, basically the prophetic word that the Lord has been releasing unto each and every one of us, I believe I started in the month of March, month of March, yes, that is, when I was explaining from the book of Exodus chapter 12. And the father says, this shall be for you the first month of the year. So we've been seeing that for majority of us, yes, the year did not begin in January. No, not at all, because the father's calendar is totally different from the calendar that the world has given. Can you see that dimension? Because the Bible tells us in the book of Ecclesiastes chapter three and verse one, there is a time and a season. And for that reason, the season that majority of us entered into and the time that we all walked into in the month of March is what? The new year. So you can begin to understand why the Father is accelerating a lot of things concerning our lives in this particular moment. And for that reason is why I just want to share this word because, you know, there is just something that is brewing in the spirit at this point in time. And I want you to understand why, because majority of you, it can seem like the enemy has been trying to wear you out. Yeah, this, that's why the Bible says, do not be weary in well-doing, but the enemy has been coming aggressively trying to wear you out, trying to get you to give up, trying to help you to, you know, trying to get you to not believe what the Father has spoken, either to be tossed to and fro. And not only that, he's not just trying to do that with you, but sometimes, just like with Jesus, he's using the people around you, using your mother, using your father, using the one basically that is around you at the same time to come against you. And it's just coming from every dimension. And it feels like it would not stop. And sometimes it's like you want to explain yourself, but they don't want to see it the way they want to see it. They want to see it the way they want to see it, not the way you see it. So for that reason, some of you, it's a place that you've just had to continue on the journey, trust in the Lord. And some of you have been crying, Father, how long? When will all of this actually come to an end? I've been holding on. I've been waiting. I've been trusting. And Father, you know, I believe your word because I know you said it and it is already done. So for that reason, I want to share just a bit of my own journey, because like I said, and like the Bible says that, you know, it says your brothers and sisters all across the world, they are going through the same thing. Yes, that is why the Bible encourages us to pray for what? For one another. So for that reason, you know, my journey, it has been a place where, you know, it's the father has just been gracious because the Lord has been honoring himself. Yes, through us to honor him in what he has been doing. And it's amazing because, you know, just recently I've been asking the Lord, you know, to help me to understand what is going on behind the scene. You know, there are some warfares that the Lord can allow. And the reason why he allows it is to strengthen you. Do you see that dimension? Yeah. Just like we see in the book of Job, Job chapter one, Job chapter two, it was not because Job sinned. It was because the Lord basically offered him up. <laughs> Do you see that? Because the Lord spoke something amazing about Job. He said, this man is an upright man. And that is the testimony the Lord has been sharing concerning you. So regardless of what has been going on around you, you've kept the posture of love. You've kept the posture of forgiveness. You've kept the posture of compassion. And yet, regardless of what was coming against you, you still continue to advance in what God has called you to what? Called you to do. So for that reason, you know, my journey, you know, the father was showing me something recently because, you know, it was a place where he was saying to me, hey, I want to just show you a few things that is happening behind the scenes. And the Lord began to show me that, you know, because of the prayer, because of the word that has been, that is being shared, <laughs> can you see, you know, some people who are basically walking in darkness, witchcraft there is, they rose up. So they're not just coming after me. They're basically going to those around me at the same time, manifesting in their dreams, trying to use them to come against me and things like that. And because why, because of what, why is that really happening? Because the people, yes, that the word is going in, you know, onto, they are being saved. The Bible tells us in the book of First Thessalonians chapter one and chapter two, it says that what the word went out with power. Yes, 
So when the word goes out with power, you can see what happens in 1 Thessalonians 1 and 2. It says that what? Your own countrymen decided to rise up against you. So you can begin to understand because the Bible actually tells you sometimes where your warfare is coming from. <laughs> Do you see that dimension? So to God be the glory because the Father is very strategic. And I keep on telling each and every one of us in Ephesians chapter 5 that whatever people do in darkness, he will eventually reveal it. So you can begin to understand it. And no matter how much they try to hide it, the Lord will basically reveal it. So this is not just what I have been experiencing. Majority of you, you have been experiencing what? The same thing. But there is good news. Yes, there is absolute good news. And that is the good news that I've come to bring onto us today. Because it is a dimension where, you know, for a long time, some of you, you've been going through this thing. And sometimes you can't even share with people. Because when you share with them, they're like, is it only you? Are you the only one? You know, can you see that dimension? mentioned, but the Father in his infinite mercy, yes, is rising for your sake in this hour. Yes, he is. And I want to read this scripture unto each and every one of us. And I believe I'm taking it from the book of what? Isaiah and what? And chapter 33. Now in verse 10, because of everything that you've been going through and because you have patiently waited for the Lord, this is what he's saying. In Isaiah 33 and verse 10, it says, Now is the time for action. I will arise. People will esteem me and recognize my greatness. Do you see that? Now it goes on to say in verse 11, For you have produced nothing but chaff and worthless stubble. Your breath is a fire that will sweep back and consume you. Your people will be burned to ashes like thorn bushes cut down and burned up in fire. Do you see? Now it says in verse 13, listen well, wherever you are, make sure you know that I have accomplished this near and far. You better take note of my incomparable strength. Yes. So you can begin to understand what the father is doing in this hour. He says, now is the time for action and I am arising for your sake. And for what I am about to do for you, people will esteem me and recognize my greatness. Because for some of you, the person who has been persecuting you consistently, those who have been coming against you consistently, they did not just arise. No, some of them, they have been since your childhood. Yet yeah, the moment they found out that your mother was pregnant with you, the warfare broke out. That is exactly what happened in Revelation chapter 12. So you can see the woman was pregnant and then eventually Satan, yes, began to chase the woman down. And when she eventually gave birth, because he was trying everything possible to make sure he does, she doesn't give birth to that child. But eventually she did. And when she did, do you know what happened? The Bible says God took the child and then led the woman into wilderness by giving her wings to be taken care of for a time. So now the Bible tells us that the same person who chased her after she went to the wilderness, could not touch her anymore, went about looking for others, trying to what? Trying to consume them too. But now the father is saying to you, now is the time for action. I will arise for what I am about to do for you. This is my rising up for you. And I'm here to fight for you. So be still and know that I am God. Now, I want us to understand because, you know, one thing I love the father for is that when he's giving you a word, he gives a sign. And I want to share this and um, I, because I believe I'm recording this and uh, I just want to share my screen with you to better understand why the father gave this sign. Now, this is what I saw on my way home. Yeah. In times past. And this is the sign the father was given because on that day I was instructed to take a stroll and I did obediently to the Lord. And as I was coming back home, you know, I was just walking back because I wanted, I wanted to catch the bus, but the Lord said, no, you have to walk. So I had to obey his instructions and I walked. So upon walking down, I was just walking, you know, minding my own business with the Lord. We're basically having a conversation. He now said to me, look up. And I'm like, look up. He said, yeah, look into the clouds. And that is exactly what I did. Now you can see in this dimension of what I am revealing here. As you can see this dimension here. Yes, if you Google a sword, I'm sure a lot of us, you know, maybe we've seen the sword from the royal family in the United Kingdom. You can Google it, a sword, and you will see maybe a sword of a knight. Yeah, that's what you're basically going to see. And the sword, you can see how it's shaped. So it's got like a covering there and then the sword is stretched out like that. So this is the sword 
because the sword comes in different dimensions in the Bible. You have the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And then you have the sword of justice. Yes. So for that reason, we've talked about, you know, the sword of the spirit, the word, but we're not here for that in this hour. No, not at all. Because the sword that we're talking about in this dimension is the sword of judgment. Yes. The sword of what? The sword of judgment. And I want to read this from the book of Isaiah. And I believe from verse what? From verse 34. The Bible says, the sword of the Lord, yes, is filled with blood. It is sated with fat and the blood of lambs and goats, with the fat of the kidney of rams, for the Lord has a sacrifice in Basra and a great slaughter in the land of Edom. Yes, in verse 35, in verse 34, sorry, from verse 5, the verse before, he says, For my sword is satiated in heaven. Behold, it shall descend for judgment upon Edom and upon the people whom I have devoted to destruction. Do you see that? Can I read that again? It says in verse 5, For my sword is satiated in heaven. Yes, behold, it shall descend for judgment upon Edom, and upon the people I have whom I have devoted to destruction. So for a time, the Lord has been speaking justice and judgment against some things, and you are yet to see that come to pass. But now is the hour that that sword has come down, to manifest the what? The justice of the Lord unto everything that has tried to come against you, unto the actions of the people that have continuously come against you. Because for a long time, the Father has been instructing these people to leave you alone. He has been instructing that situation, yes, not to arise anymore. But there are some people who have given themselves over to wickedness consistently and they will not give up. So you can read in Isaiah chapter 66 and verse 16. And this is what he says, for the Lord will execute judgment by fire and by his sword on all flesh. And those slain by the Lord will be many. Do you see that dimension? Now, you can see when in the days of Jeremiah, when he basically went and declared judgment concerning their actions, they refused to give up. And what happened? The father commanded Jeremiah, do not pray for them anymore. And I believe I've shared a word here on this channel before, where I consistently continue to encourage each and every one of us that if the father has instructed you not to pray for people anymore, don't do it. Why? Because he said, I will not listen to your prayers. So there is no prayer you can say. There is no amount of them coming into your dream for you to pray for them. Nothing is going to work anymore. Do you see that? Nothing. So no matter how you're there kneeling down and father, I pray for these people. He said, I will not listen to your prayers. That's why the father, we understand. Do you see when his word is spoken, it does not return to him void. I know some people will say, but Jesus said to pray for our enemies, pray for those who persecute us and what? And, and he says, pray for those who basically despitefully use you and bless those who curse you. Jesus said that we thank God because that is the word of God. But then in the old covenant, yes, in the old Testament, the word of the Lord, the Bible says, I have come to fulfill it. That's what Jesus did. So you can see this is God himself speaking. And he says that what? He says that those and those slain by the Lord will be many. So this is where I keep encouraging majority of us. Yes, to understand that a lot of people are going to sleep in this hour. And these are the people that God has been telling, instructing to leave you alone. Yes, he has been telling you, he has been telling those people to leave you alone. Just in the same way he has been telling Pharaoh, let my people go. Pharaoh refused to let the people go. And for that reason, what happened? The sea came and covered Pharaoh. So this is the sword that is manifesting upon the earth in this hour. It is the sword of judgment. The father himself has come down. This is God himself that has come down from heaven. I, the book of Exodus chapter three says, can you see when he said, I have come down because I have seen the oppression of my people. So he saw the oppression and he came down. So for that reason, do you see that dimension? It says, I have come down. That is why it says, behold, the sword 
shall descend for judgment upon Edom. So for the people who have been coming against, for those who have consistently continued to manifest all of these things, he says, I have come down because you know why? My sword is here for judgment and upon the people whom I have devoted. So when the father says upon the people I have devoted, this is the reason why the word of the Lord has consistently gone out and said, leave them alone. I said, stay away from that person. I said, stay away from their ministry. I said, stay away from persecuting them. Stay away. Don't do them no harm. Touch no my anointed. Do them no harm. But they've consistently done it. And the father himself said, I have devoted them to destruction. So the judgment has been passed onto these people. And for that reason, the father has come down by the sword that you see online to execute that judgment. Do you see that? So for those who are going to sleep, they're going to sleep. For those who are going to lose things, they're going to begin to lose things. So you can begin to understand it. This is why I believe I share the word with each and every one of us. That when Joseph's brothers, they did him harm and eventually he became who he was. The Bible tells us that the father had to shut the whole world down for them to come to Joseph. So this is where you begin to understand it. This is the judgment of the Lord. So some people, the father has been telling, go and apologize to that person, but you have refused to do so. He shuts that down. He shuts the ministry down. He shuts whatever he needs to shut down to come to get your attention so that you can do exactly what God has called you to do. Leave that person alone. You have refused to leave them alone. Then my judgment, you have to go to sleep because you know why? You cannot continue to delay and oppress and continue to manifest wickedness over the one that I have already set free. So you can read in the Bible, right? Because the Bible says that God, you know, there's a dimension in the Bible where if the father came down and said, what have we here? You know, you were sold for nothing, you know, and with nothing, I'm going to bring you back. So when the father said, what have we have here? What do we have here? That means he has set those people free at one point in time. But what Pharaoh is, is all, you know, his entourage or whatever it is, they went after the people again to bring them into captivity because they saw them advancing. Do you see? So because your advancement, you're advancing in the job, you're advancing in the marriage, you're advancing in the business, you're advancing in the ministry is threatening some people. Yes. So that's the reason why they basically rose, risen up yet against you. Because there was a revelation the father was given concerning my testimony, which I was sharing. And the father was saying, because of the prayers you're praying, because of the words that you are releasing, can you see? Some warlocks, witch doctors, they arose because their sorcery stopped working. Everything stopped working. And then eventually they rose up again and they began to act all manner of wickedness. And the father says, nothing is hidden from me. And for that reason, I have come to execute what? To execute judgment. Can you see that? He says, behold, it shall descend for judgment upon Edom and upon the people whom I have devoted. So the word has already gone out that this is what I'm about to do. So now the sword is here to manifest that in which the Lord has spoken. Amen. So this is where you begin to understand it. If the Father has told you to stop praying, please stop praying for them. If he's asked you to pray for them, please do so. Amen. Because this is the justice of the Lord that is what? That is manifesting in what? In creation. Because you know why? The hour has what? Has come. So if you read the book of Leviticus chapter 25, 26 to 25, 26, 25 thereabout, he says, I will also bring upon you a sword which will execute vengeance for the covenant. And when you gather together into your cities, I will send pestilence among you so that you'll be delivered into enemy's hands. So you can see that when the sword is here, nobody can escape it. No matter how much they run, they cannot escape it. Why? Because of the covenant that he has with you. Do you see that? Now you can look, let's look at another dimension of that sword in Deuteronomy chapter 32 and what? And verse 41, it says, if I sharpen my flashing sword and my hand takes hold on justice, I will render vengeance on my adversaries and I will repay those who hate me. This is the Lord speaking. And this is what we're seeking in creation in this hour. Amen. To God be the glory. So this is where you're going to begin to see. The Bible says, let your heart not rejoice when you see your enemy fall. This is always the warning that I give each and every one of us and the counsel at the same time because the hour has come. 
it is time to set you free. In Jesus' mighty name, I love you so very much because you're the blessedness of the Father. It's time for you to move forward. Yes, no longer shall you be delayed because you know why? It is time to enter into the fulfillment of what God has ordained. So the Egyptians that you see today, you shall see them no more. Those that have caused limitations and hindrances, restrictions and limitations over your life, you will see them no more. The Bible says you will look for your enemies with your own eyes, but you shall not see them anymore. This is the hour, the sword of judgment resting upon creation, not just with people, resting in government, resting in leadership, and those in authority that the Father has given this warning to. I release this into creation, and I thank each and every one of you. I bless this video with mercy, and those who are recipients of it, I bless you with life. God bless you. Stay blessed, because you're the blessedness of the Father. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I love you all. Hallelujah.